For this design, we're going to make this uh, pendant. You can break this down into smaller pieces and I'll show you where you can use um, pieces as bracelets and earrings as we go along. So we're going to start from the centre here and work our way out um, while we do this. So right in the very centre is this little ring. Um, we need a needle, I'm using a size 10, some fire line or, or um, beading thread, pair of cutters um, or a thread zapper, well cutters to cut it really. Um, and away we go. So I've got the ginkgos, one of the paisley duos, the apricot, um, the chalk apricot, which is beautiful, um, and both of the 11s from the kit. So I'm going to start off with the purple ones, and I'm going to pop one on as a stopper bead. Let me just pop that in there. And then another one. So on the inner ring, we've got effectively two of the purples then we're going to do a little um pico so we're going to have the four of the um orangey ones and i'm going to go in back in through that first orangey one next to the purple pull down and you get your little pico two of the purples four two Three, four of the orange, pull down, keep your tension, pop your needle through and your pico. So you want six picots and you're going to finish at a pico. So I've got one here. Let me just move on to the next needle. So you end up with your set of six. Now they do have a habit of going all over the place. Let me try and, there we go, flatten them out. And then you want to thread back through the first two of your purple, join up that circle so you can see you've got your circle, your inner circle. And then you're going to go up through the bottom of the pico and through one of the sides. Now, ideally, well, I'm right handed, so I'll go in a clockwise direction you can go whichever direction so long as you're consistent you want to be coming up through the pico that's the opposite side to which direction you're going to be going we're well, then going to go through the bottom of one of the um ginkgo beads slide that down so that is actually going to sit in that position but we're going to cross over to the next one this avoids us sort of going over that way going over the top we don't actually go directly over the top of these so we then want to connect to the next one so we're going to do two of the purple then we do a little pico you're going to do a lot of these picos by the way um, you can substitute things so if you've got some um of the mini duos they would work instead of the little pico basically what you're doing is creating a little connector so you put your two on, your four orange, and then you're coming back through that first one of the orange and pull down. OK, and then you're going to go across. So you want your other two purple in through the top part of the ginkgo and down through the side of that inner pico. OK. So you're creating this little bridge between the two. Now, don't worry, it looks like they're not going to go round. These spread a bit. So you're then going to work your way down through the pico, through the next two purples. There we go. And then up through to the next one. This all the while is reinforcing this inner circle as well. Through the side one, up through that ginkgo, and then repeat. And you keep doing that until you've got all the way round the circle. So we're going to move on to our next one. And this is what it looks like when you've gone all the way round. And it... It, it doesn't seem like you're going to get there from that, but that's all you're doing all the way around. And if you can see these, when you first put them on, these, these stick quite close together. 
but as you go round then these these sort of squash down a bit more now at this stage these make absolutely fabulous earrings connect them what i did um to make a bracelet is i've connected them so where i've got to the connection bit i've used the top one of the pico as this one from the connecting one and actually connected a bracelet together like that so there are versatile things you can do you could actually make if we pop this here you could actually make a necklace going either side for this piece i just wanted to have it just plain and simple um to give you the idea so once you've got your first i'd say that's your first stage motif because the other won't hold a shape and um, this is the first part where you can hold the shape so we're now on the paisley ring so we're going to get the paisleys now these go in between the picots with the curve outwards and the inner part is the concave bit which just allows the the um ginkgo to fit in so we're coming out of the top of our side we're now on the side we want to go in we're going to have a purple then we're going to go through the outside curve of the um paisley purple in the middle the inside curve of the next paisley see how they're almost like a pair of horns then we're going to get another purple and then we're going to go down through that side of the little pico pull it through and you're going to form these and again you're going to go all the way around so we then feed that down sorry i didn't you don't have to go all the way down you're just going to come up through the next side ready to repeat that and again you do this all the way round. so once you've gone all the way round, we're almost at the final stage now i love this as a motif i think it's fab it's great looking you would have to go round it a lot because you'll see as soon as you pick that up it's unstable and these even if it's got so if you wore it as a necklace against something these are going to flop they're not stable at all you could if you wanted to leave it at this stage without doing this extra bit to get the sort of star effect what you could do is do the little cross in the middle and that would help stabilize it without putting the extra ginkgos in there however we're going to go through the whole thing so um the next stage is we want to do this little cross between the two paisleys so i'm going to pop on this this first one you're only doing a half so i'm popping on one purple one orange and two purples so this first one will finish when we get to the other side when we've gone all the way around pull that through then you're going to have a purple and your ginkgo now this 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 is where you get a problem because you're not going straight across these you're going top and bottom so you have to go around the top i chose to do it with the little pico using the orange on the outside so again we're going to add three of our purple four of our orange pull that down so i want to hold that in place go through the the orange next to the purple pull my little pico into place you don't have to do a pico you can just loop it round if you prefer so three more purple on down through the other side right we're now ready to come out so we're going to have a purple going through there so that gives us that point there but it's still not stabilized these which are going to waggle around so we're now going to do this cross where we've only done one half there so we're going to have two purple one orange it's handy to have the contrast because we're going to cross through that and it gives you a point instead of having to count then we've got another purple we're going to go through the top part of that um, pico now you can see why i want the picos or say you could do you could pop in a little um a little mini duo there because 
you're using that extra layer. So we want one purple, then back up through that same orange. Pull that tight. And then two purple through the top of the next paisley. And then you're off and running, doing your, your ginkgo bead there and carrying all the way round. And then you end up with this star. It will be fantastic, and I'm going to ask them if I can do this, that will be fantastic in whites for Christmas. It's a lovely design, I love it. Um, you can tie these together if you want a big cuff bracelet. Like I say, you can, you can, you can play with this, this design quite a lot. So have fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing your interpretations.